Racism, turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. He gonna let racism turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking. Welcome to Singing in the Spirit. Come along with me as we take you back in time to show a spotlight on the life and contributions of Mrs. Rosa Louise Macaulay Parks, who was born February 4th in 1913 in Tuskegee, Alabama. Yes, yeah, she was born in the Deep South during a time when segregation ruled our nation. All public facilities, including libraries, schools, hotels, restaurants, and movie theaters were kept separate, bus stations, Train stations, public restrooms, and even water fountains had signs that read, for whites only and for coloreds only. And if you ignored these signs and you were a person of color, you could be beaten, arrested, and fined for doing so. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child Lord sometimes I feel like a motherless child sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Oh, long ways from home. Oh, long ways from home. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Lord, sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes, Lord, I feel like I'm oh, almost gone a long ways from home a long ways from home. Miss Rosa Parks saw how the Ku Klux Klan terrorized the African American community by burning crosses on lawns, shooting and lynching black men and sometimes women. It really troubled her to see how her people were being mistreated and how at that time in the early 1950s, we did not have the right to even vote. She was so determined to make a difference that she signed up with the NAACP, that's the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And for a while, she worked as the field secretary in the Montgomery branch of the NAACP. Miss Rosa Parks was like a Moses, Moses to her people. Way down in Egypt land, tell Pharaoh to let my people go. When Israel was in Egypt land, let my people go. Oppressed so hard, 
they could not stand. Let my people go. Oh, go down, Moses. We're down in Egypt land. Mm, you better tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. In 1932, Miss Rosa Parks married Mr. Raymond Parks. He was also active in the NAACP. Together they worked tirelessly to bring about change in Montgomery, Alabama. During those days, you know, they had a strange rule for black folks. The bus fare was only 10 cents, but you had to go to the front of the bus, pay your fare, then you had to get off the bus, go to the back door of the bus, get back up on the bus, and then find your seat in the colored section. This was for all people of color. It was really a lot of humiliation, you know, to have to pay, pay your fare and not be able to sit anywhere on the bus. And black people were getting tired of it more and more and more. And Miss Rosa Parks in particular, she really had had enough. This was a segregationist law that had been a rule since the year 1900 in Montgomery, Alabama, and everybody had to obey. Sometimes, if the, bu the bus driver was in a bad mood after you paid your fare and tried to go to the back, he would pull off and leave you standing there after you paid your fare. Now, you know that's terrible. And to Miss Rosa Parks, it happened to her. One time in 1943, I think it was, she had paid her fare, got off the bus to go to the back of the bus to get on the bus, and it was raining real, real hard that day. And after she stepped off the bus and paid her fare, the bus pulled off and left her standing there in the rain. Lord, remember me. Do Lord, do Lord, Lord, remember me. Hey, hey, do Lord, do Lord, Lord, remember me. Do Lord, remember me. Oh, when I am burdened down, Lord, remember me. Ooh, when I am burdened down, Lord, remember me. Hey, when I am burdened down, Lord, remember me. Do Lord, remember me. Ooh, do Lord, do Lord, Lord, remember me. Hey, do Lord, do Lord, Lord, remember me. Ooh, do Lord, do Lord, Lord, remember me. Oh, do Lord, remember me. Oh, when I am sinking down, Lord, remember me. Hey, when I am sinking down, Lord, remember me. Ooh, when I am sinking down, Lord, remember me. Hey, do Lord, remember me. Oh, do Lord, do Lord. Lord, remember me. Ooh, do Lord, do Lord. Lord, remember me. Hey, do Lord, do Lord. Lord, remember me. Do Lord, remember me. That was usually a sign in the middle of the bus that said, for colors only. And all African Americans had to sit back behind that sign. There was another f sign in the front that would say, for whites only, and that's where white folks sat. And that's the, how they kept everybody separate. And you could not go past that line. If you did, you could be arrested. And everybody knew that, and everybody tried to obey the law, even though many people were definitely humiliated after having to pay their fare to have to do such a thing. On this particular day, 1955, December 1st, Miss Rosa Parks had been working all day. She had a job at the Montgomery Fair store where she worked as a seamstress. And 
then it was about six o'clock when she got on the bus. You know, her feet was tired and she wanted to sit down. So she paid her fare on the bus, walked off the bus, walked to the back of the bus, got back on the bus, and sat in the first section that was reserved for colored folks only. But as the bus driver went up the street, the bus got crowded. More and more white people got on the bus. And they had a rule that if more white people got on the bus and didn't have any seats up front, you could be asked to get up from your seat and give your seat to a white person. That's how it went. White folks didn't mind sitting in the colored section. Uh-oh, but that's the way it was. However, on this day, December 1st, 1955, she was tired. She had been working all day as a seamstress at the Montgomery Fair store, and she just wanted to sit down and rest her feet. Well, along the bus route that day, the front whites only seats soon got crowded. And Mr. James Blake, the bus driver, stopped the bus and went to them in the colored only section and said, uh, I want y'all to give up, give up those seats. Give up those seats. Get up and move and let the white folks sit there. Well, everybody got up but Miss Rosa Parks. She did not move from her seat. And when she was interviewed about her feelings at that moment, she said, when that white bus driver stepped back towards us, honey, and he waved his hands and ordered us to get up out of our seats, I felt like a determination covered my body like a winter quilt on a cold, cold day. I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Oh, I won't get up out of my seat. I shall not be moved. I won't get up out of my seat. I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Oh, I'm going to get my freedom. I shall not be moved. I'm going to get my freedom. I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Ooh, we shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the waters. We shall not be moved. Now, then, Mr. James Blake, the white bus driver, he went straight to Miss Rosa Parks and said to her, why don't you stand up? And, and she said, I don't think I should have to stand up. I done paid my fare. Mr. Blake said, you not going to stand up? She said, no, I'm not. He got so angry, he said, well, if you don't get up, I'm going to call the police and have you arrested. Miss Rosa Parks sat there calmly and said, yes, you may do that. No, no, no. Not now, I've come too far. I'm not gonna let nobody turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking. Keep on a talking, marching up to freedom land. Oh, ain't gonna let racism turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let racism turn me around. I 
I'm going to keep on walking, I keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. Oh, ain't going to let segregation turn me around, turn me around. Turn me around, ain't gonna let segregation turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking, ha, keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. Hey, hey, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, I keep on a talking, marching up to freedom. Oh no, ain't gonna let discrimination turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let discrimination turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, I keep on a talking, marching up to freedom land. Marching, marching up to freedom land. Marching, marching up to freedom land. Freedom, marching up to freedom land. When the police officer came to arrest her, she asked him, why do y'all push us around? I don't know, miss, but the law's the law, and you're under arrest, the policeman said as he led Miss Rosa Parks off the bus. When she was interviewed on the video a couple of months later, she was asked why did she refuse to give up her seat that day? And she said, I would have to know once and for all, what rights I had as a human being and as a citizen of Montgomery, Alabama. I only knew that as I was being arrested, that it was the very last time that I would ever have to ride in humiliation of that kind. I hear music in the air. Up above my head, I hear music in the air. Up above my head, I hear music in the air. Oh, yes, there must be a God somewhere. Oh, up above my head. I hear freedom in the air, up above my head. I hear freedom in the air, up above my head. I hear freedom in the air, oh yeah. There must be a God somewhere. Oh, up above my head, I hear love in the air. Up above my head, I hear love in the air. Up above my head, I hear love in the air. Don't you know who there must be? A God somewhere. One more time. Up above my head. I hear freedom in the air. Yeah. Up above my head. I hear freedom in the air. Don't you know? Up above my head. I hear freedom in the air. Don't you know who there must be a God somewhere? Yeah, 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 yeah. There must be a God somewhere. I know, I know, I know, no, no. There must be a God somewhere. 
That night, the entire black community of Montgomery, Alabama was in an uproar. Folks were tired of being humiliated, tired of being mistreated, and they were tired of being treated like second-class citizens, and they decided to do something. The time was ripe for a major protest. Mr. E.D. Nixon, he was the same man who headed the Montgomery chapter of the NAACP, and Ms. Rosa Parks worked for him as his field secretary. Well, he got together with uh, some of the ministers, and then he contacted Ms. Joanne Robinson, who was a professor at Alabama State. And he told her about what had happened, that Ms. Rosa Parks had been arrested. And they decided, put their heads together and decided that maybe it was time to do a bus boycott to tell people don't ride the buses until they change the law. Well, that night, Miss Robinson stayed up all night long mimeographing flyers to spread out to the community. And she made up 35,000 flyers, took them around to all the black churches in Montgomery and asked them to distribute to everybody, telling them, don't ride the buses, Monday. Don't ride, don't ride the buses. Please don't ride the buses. Now, I want to tell you exactly what the flyer said. It said, we're asking every Negro to stay off the buses Monday in protest of Mrs. Rosa Parks' arrest and trial. You can afford to stay out of school for one day. If you work, take a cab or walk. But please, children and grown-ups, don't. Don't ride the buses come Monday. Don't do it. Stay off the buses. And it worked. That was the first major victory for civil rights in the South. It all started in Montgomery, Alabama. And it all started with Ms. Rosa Parks, who's now known as the mother of the civil rights movement. No person of color rode the buses that Monday, December 5th, 1955. Suddenly, there were tons of empty buses riding the streets of Montgomery. Deciding to capitalize on their first major success, 50 pastors and leaders of the African American came together that night to map out an economic strategy as to how they were going to win the battle and change those evil segregationist laws of Montgomery. These leaders formed an organization that became known as the MIA, or the Montgomery Improvement Association. And they decided, oh, you know, we got to have a leader. And they remembered there was a new preacher in town who was the new minister at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. Guess who he was? Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King had just come to town, and they decided we're going to let him be our spokesman. He's going to be our leader. He's going to speak for us and represent us in our struggle to end discrimination on the buses. Earlier that day, Ms. Rosa Parks was found guilty and had to pay a $10 fine plus court costs. And Reverend E.D. Nixon and another gentleman uh, took care of that for her. But she appealed her conviction and formally challenged the legality of racial segregation. At the meeting, Dr. King spoke and everyone agreed that what they should do to make the leaders of Montgomery listen. Protesting wasn't enough, but the best way to do it was hit them in the pocket, you know, and refuse to ride the buses, to continue the struggle. So they said, we're not gonna ride the buses of Montgomery no, no more 
until the laws are changed. So they formed carpools. Some people would walk to work wherever they went or rode bicycles. Or some people got, you know, had a, a business sense and started their own cab companies. They began to take people back and forth to work or wherever they wanted to go. They did all of that, but they did not ride the buses. 40,000 black people stood strong and did not ride the buses for 382 days. So, a whole year and 26 days later, after the city of Montgomery realized they were losing thousands of dollars, they changed the laws. Oh, yes, they did. They changed the laws. The walls of Jericho came tumbling down. And from that day forward, people of color could ride the buses and sit anywhere they wanted. Oh, the whole world knew about this change, that a great revolution had come to the city of Montgomery. And you know, it began to happen when people begin to see how they succeeded they began trying it, not only all across the southern states of the United States of America, but even in South Africa and other places around the world. And of course, if you know about the life and career of Dr. King, he became the genuine spokesman of the civil rights movement. Miss Rosa Parks became an international heroine to the whole world. Her tenacity and resilience paid off and she became known around the world as the mother of the civil rights movement. And all of the freedom fighters had a new song to sing. You can't find me nowhere. <laughs> Times have changed. Now we can sit anywhere we want to on the bus all across the United States of America. We can ride anywhere we want to ride on the trains anywhere in America. We can ride anywhere on the airplanes, as long as your money can afford it. <laughs> anywhere across the United States of America. If you miss me from the back of the bus, you can't find me nowhere. Come on up to the front of the bus. I'll be riding up there. I'll be riding up there, I'll be riding up there, come on up to the front of the bus, and I'll be riding up there, if you miss me from the cotton fields, you can't find me nowhere, come on up to the voting booth, I'll be voting right there. I'll be voting right there. I'll be voting right there. Come on up to the voting booth and I'll be voting right there. If you miss Surely I hope that you enjoyed this show as we trace the life and legacy of Miss Rosa Macaulay Parks, the mother of the civil rights movement who planted the seed for change and revolution in this country. You've been listening to The Amazing Journey of Miss Harriet Tubman. Tune in next week when we'll explore the life of another great African-American who has made great contributions to our society. Come on up to the front of the bus. Come on up to the front of the bus. Come on up to the front of the bus and I